By the time we reached the Mexican shore, I was afraid to let go of the boat. My strength was gone. I was so weak. I was afraid that in two feet of water, so close to deliverance, I would drown. I struggled to shore and fell upon the sand. It was warm and soft, like pressing my face against the cheek of God. And somewhere two eyes were smiling at having me there. I was so spent, I could hardly move. And so Richard Parker went ahead of me. He stretched his legs and walked along the shore. At the edge of the jungle, he stopped. I was certain he was going to look back at me, flatten his ears to his head, growl, that he would bring our relationship to an end in some way. But he just stared ahead into the jungle. And then Richard Parker, my fierce companion, the terrible one who kept me alive, disappeared forever from my life. After a few hours, a member of my own species found me. He left and returned with a group who carried me away. I wept like a child. Not because I was overwhelmed at having survived, although I was. I was weeping because Richard Parker left me so unceremoniously. It broke my heart. You know, my father was right. Richard Parker never saw me as his friend. After all we had been through, he didn't even look back. But I have to believe there was more in his eyes than my own reflection staring back at me. I know it. I felt it. Even if I can't prove it. You know, I've left so much behind. My family, the zoo, India, Anandi. I suppose in the end, the whole of life becomes an act of letting go. But what always hurts the most is not taking a moment to say goodbye. I was never able to thank my father for all I learned from him, to tell him without his lessons that I would never have survived. And not Richard Parker is a tiger, but I wish I had said, it's over, we survived. Thank you for saving my life. I love you, Richard Parker. You'll always be with me. I can't be with you. I don't know what to say.